What is up, everybody? It was long awaited, but we are back to discuss the season four finale of Amazon Prime Video's superhero show, The Boys. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darren Scalamoni. I am joined, as always, by my buddies, Michael Penniston. Hello, everyone. As well as Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. Guys, we have so much to discuss. This dropped, uh, as, our, as of our recording, we're recording this the Tuesday following the episode, which came out last Thursday. So we're a little late. But it's for good reason. We wanted to get all three of us in studio to discuss this finale. Um, we've been pretty critical of this season, which I think a lot of people have been, and rightfully so. I think there have been a few moments that have been <coughs> not boys-like. They've mm. gone a little bit too deep with their meta references. They have made some choices that we haven't really been able to understand, and they haven't really fully explained. But Michael said something before we started recording which I would love for you to bring to light for the audience in which this show did something very magical with its finale in terms of its storytelling. Yes, so why don't you go ahead and allude that to the audience, Michael? <laughs> yes, it did. Um, like you said, coming into the season, um, a lot of complaints, a lot of problems, maybe not all problems, Ooh. but a lot of criticism. And in one episode, they were able to fit every problem, every complaint I heard online, every, I don't know. And there needs to be a study on this episode because they somehow made it perfect. Mm -hmm. And just, I'm so ready for that season. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Vinny. Yeah, I, I agree. I do. The setup for season five is like now one of the most anticipated seasons of television in the oncoming of just, you know, constant content for yeah. me. I like the second this was over, I immediately was like, holy shit, why do I have to wait two years? We have to wait two whole years now for season five because just everything they set up in this last episode is just, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And it's also just a great episode through and through. I loved it. The plot twists were shocking and relevant and going into just whatever's to come is exciting yeah i agree so without further ado let's jump into spoilers gentlemen because yes. there's a lot that we need to discuss so if you guys are tuning into this review and you're looking for a non-spoiler sorry we don't have it for you just <laughs> go and watch the episode if you haven't watched it already then come back and watch our review and discussion on it because we dive into some deep theories we dive into all our thoughts and we all have different thoughts because we're all different people yes. so go and watch the episode come back and check it out because we're going to dive into spoilers in three two one so let's start with the big one. Hmm. Victoria Newman is dead. Hmm. Did we think this was going to happen? I had no idea. We had some theories, especially Vinny was a proponent theorist and rightfully so because the original title of this episode was called assassination run. It was retitled to season four finale in light of the assassination attempt on former president Donald Trump. Hmm. So we had thought though with the name, it could have been something with A-Train. We don't get A-Train at all in this episode. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. So Victoria Newman, let's start there. Vinny, we'll go with you. We'll, we'll circle around the other mm -hmm. way. What were your thoughts on it? Did you have any theory that that might have happened? And what was your reaction to seeing her brutal fucking death? Hmm. So that was completely shocking. <laughs> I did not anticipate Victoria Newman to die, especially – I love the way she did die. Yep. Like having that whole scene where Butcher comes in and then we finally get a reveal of like Butcher's power, which is essentially like Venom yeah. and like living with this like symbiote. And it's so disgusting and powerful. And her death scene was just off, like awful in, in the most spectacular way. And I did not expect that at all. If we're talking about A Train, I really thought A Train was going to be a big component of this mm -hmm. episode, mm -hmm. but I'm also excited to see what he's going to play in the next season. I hope we don't forget about him. I hope that he actually comes back and and plays a part. So, Michael, yeah, I agree. I um, I I it, I had the thought <laughs> in the back of my head that maybe like quite possibly she could die. I didn't think at all it would happen the way it happened mm. um and i definitely thought that if it did happen if it if it was to have happened it would have happened with homelander killing her i always thought that yeah. there was like yeah. a build up with that 
Um, I was not expecting how this played out at all. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Like, it just like not at all. Um, I thought the scene was so so good, especially coming off of Huey's little like like Captain America motivational speech, and then just bam, like right into it. Um, and yeah, I, it was it was interesting to see Butcher um, now in the, this. I guess you could say almost full. I don't want to say full form, but like we don't know what could possibly come with it. But to know that we saw the it's an extent of his powers plus it almost like kind of like de-aged him like he kind of like if you looked yeah. at previous uh, yeah he was like dying and now it's yeah. like, it's like fine so like to kind of like see like butch like season one butcher back out of nowhere i'm like oh snap mm. um and then the death was just so like boys brutal it was just it was it was cool even like the little like moment where you see like um what's victoria's daughter's name um zoe zoe where you yeah. see zoe kind of like try and go and he just like hits her and she goes flying which mm. shows how strong butcher really is yeah. too mm. um that he could just like fight off all those people like that um it was it was a scene i for sure wasn't expecting um but i definitely think it was one of those scenes that played an important role in this episode being as good as it was mm. and like being able to catapult us into like the next season so strong because like she also was to me like a heavy hitter character that could maybe even take out Homelander at some point. Like mm. I always thought like maybe she could be that or there would be something similar to that. Now that she's out of the equation entirely, the immediately the dynamic of everything changed. Yeah. And so it, it was big. It was I a hundred percent agree with you. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting it. I did call the butcher thing early on mm. as soon as he killed Ezekiel. I had a mm. feeling that, we were going to see something like that happen. Mm -hmm. Go back and watch the tape. I called it. Um, <laughs> Newman dying the way that she did was definitely, like you said, it, it, it was very reminiscent of some of the other brutal deaths that we've seen. I mean, week to week on the boys. Um, the interesting thing to me in all of it too, which we can transition into is the role that sister Sage has in all. And I definitely want to piggyback off what you just said, Michael. <clears throat> Newman's character, Newman dying, has a whole different meaning in this world now. And we are now in a place where, I mean, the soups always had an influence on the political landscape in this world, but now it's very direct. So much so that we get the stinger at the end of the episode as well, where the new president uh, takes Homelander uh, into like a cryogenic. Uh, chamber and there's soldier boy mm. um who is his father so there's a lot to come with that but what i do want to focus on again first is the sister sage of it all because her character has definitely been one of my mvps for the season and so hard to implement a new character four seasons into a show a beloved show mm -hmm. and have a character be as effective as she was um i do want to give props to the actress um because she was so great this season. I know I've shouted her out in the past. Susan Hayward plays Sister Sage. Um, and we get the end of this where, again, it's like Homelander. It's the first person that Homelander, there's there's just a deeper connection rather than it just being something like that he has with like Firecracker where he's just there for the for the milk. Like, it's hmm. a different relationship there. Um, Michael, how did you feel about Sister Sage's impact at the end of the season? And just sort of where do you think we're going to go from here? with the partnership that is sister sage and homelander so i really love sister sage i um i i like you said again it's hard for you to just throw a new character in the mists like that um but i think that the, the this character was the best mm -hmm. way they could have gone with all of this honestly i think that um in the in the grand scheme of things you need somebody with a mind like um what's victoria's dad's name um stan edgar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know like that but like for it to also be like a superpower and it'd be like i don't know you need somebody that just knows Vought or like like or at least like thinks like Vought and like but is masterful is very like manipulative and just sister sage i felt like is like the clear representation of that <laughs> mm. um and i loved how they 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 honestly had her arc this season like for you to think that like okay like you think that she's like this this high and like like all like like homelander's right hand woman basically thing um where uh, and then like the last episode or uh, the last two episodes i think were like the whole uh tet night thing happened and like mm -hmm. you saw like she kind of just like 
fell through um and you think all right like i guess that she wasn't anything and then for her to come back and like she had one of the hardest lines i think too um in the season mm. where like where he was like well why did you do the homeland and asked why'd you do this and she was like to see if i could mm. and i was like yeah. yo like what mm. <laughs> that's badass <laughs> it's like that's badass. super badass and it was just uh I don't know to know that all of this was in some way or another still aligned with her plan just shows you that she is a serious threat in all of this to the point where even when you think things aren't going to plan it's still going to plan so it, it makes me wonder now that her and homelander are really at like this like top rank sort of thing like what <laughs> effect she's gonna have on the next season and is her loyalty even still truly with homelander um I, I i don't know i definitely still wonder a lot of that but again i loved how they they portrayed her character i am curious if we get like a battle of the wits between sister sage and stan mm. going forward especially because stan's daughter was now killed mm-hmm. and his granddaughter is the only person in the world he might love more than his daughter mm. so i mean again he's he's very much a, a bought suit yeah but i mean he might not even fully i don't know he might not even fully believe or know what happened to his daughter i'm curious if maybe he teams up with the boys and they have to take down butcher too because butcher's a threat now and he's mm-hmm. basically having like a villain turn yeah. towards yeah. the end of the of the show mm-hmm. but uh Vinny, um, we discussed a lot there i don't know what you want to dive into hmm. there's a specific thing yeah <clears throat> not really anything specific just kind of uh echoing what you guys said like sister sage is such an interesting character and i love the fact that like cause i i had a feeling from the beginning like she's so intelligent to the point where like whatever it's even if it seems like it's not going to plan it's going to be the plan um and we got a confirmation of that which was which was cool i think um i will i also want to mention i don't know why my brain keeps i'm just gonna go spiraling on yeah, yeah. something else because my brain keeps uh it's popping up again and again and that's ashley oh that was the next part i was gonna bring up too yeah (laughs) so we see ashley take v and like we don't know what superpower she has but we mentioned a train just before and i think that maybe they started growing a bond in this season and i think that they're gonna in the fifth season be like a soup up like duo (laughs) to try to like assist the boys in taking down homeland i definitely agree with you um my theory in terms of what is going to happen i mean you see a little bit of it when it, with her head like hmm. kind of becoming deformed i think she's going to be like um like the leader in marvel and like sinestro and dc like she's hmm. just going to have a ginormous fucking head and she's going to be incredibly intelligent and incredibly powerful yeah that's hmm. what i think is going to happen um i mean <laughs> they've already made so many references to her losing all her hair She's been pulling out her hair hmm. season after season. Um, but I do think that's intentional, the way that the relationship was forming between Ashley and A-Train going forward. So, Vinny, I definitely agree with you on that. Hmm. Michael, did you have anything? Not only that, thinking <laughs> about it like that um, and, like, the idea of her, like, especially Ashley in the midst of this and coming off, like, the whole Sister Sage conversation, if that does play out, that would be cool. Because I always felt like Sister Sage and Ashley kind of had, like, Ashley has beef with a lot of people. Like, no one really yeah. likes her. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like um, there were times where you would see, like, Sage and Ashley really kind of go at it just because they were so, like, opposing forces at times. So it would be cool to see Ashley maybe then become, like, also a super thinker sort of thing. And then mm-hmm. it's, like, ends up being an Ashley versus Sage thing. I don't know. I um I'm interested though because uh, and I'm happy you brought up that Ashley thing because that yeah. was like such a cliffhanger of a moment, right? It's hmm. like they could go anywhere with that. So yeah. it's like my my friend had a theory that, um, unlike your guys's predictions, he predicted that, uh, that she will have like hair superpowers, <laughs> like she can control, like she'll grow back and her then hair just like and whip like, people with her hair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'd be <laughs> crazy. crazy. Uh, excuse me <clears throat> that'd be that'd be crazy mm-hmm. i i could see it happening though um so yeah ashley's a great point um one of the other things that michael and i discussed before we started recording that Vinny i know is also near and dear because it's something you've been waiting on so i would love to go for your take on it first mm-hmm. um we finally have the coming together in a romantic sense between frenchie and yes. uh, kimiko yes. um and we get 
Kimiko speaking her first words uh, hmm. throughout the series. So um, was that a moment where you got up out of your chair and you breakfast club fist pump or like, <laughs> what was your take on that? Yeah. So for, yes, yeah, that's exactly my reaction. Actually. <laughs> um, I freaking love Frenchie and I love Kimiko so much mm -hmm. and seeing their moment of embrace in this episode made me so happy. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> and then and then and we'll we'll go into this later because i think the last like five minutes is literally a masterpiece yeah it's pretty crazy like nirvana's heart-shaped box is playing and, and what a great use of that song and that scene where we have kate from gen v like essentially brainwashed and have you gone back and watched gen v yet I, I have not. Oh, <laughs> dude! I'm not, but uh, just because I've been busy, you know. No, I yeah, get it. Uh, You're a busy guy. You're a busy guy. Understood. Uh, but that scene broke me. That scene, like, actually, that whole montage was, like, so shocking and so powerful. But that particularly, when Kimiko finally says, no, no, and is screaming and crying as she watches Frenchie, like, like there's no violent force it's unlike the boy and i like this contrast of kate's power within the situation because the boys is very violent right like i feel like typically in the boys uh if that if this would occur it would be like frenchie being exploded into a million pieces and yeah. then kimiko being like no but no he's intact it's it's the superpower that's like you know, and, and, and Frenchie, we have him finally regaining control in his life towards the later end of the season for it to just be taken away by Kate. Mm -hmm. And I, there's something, uh, the dramatic irony behind that, I think, is so powerful. Yeah, I do think it's it kind of resembles, not to be too, like, uh, mainstream with it, but it the way that it ends, it reminds me of, like, what happens when, I believe it's Civil War where you see all the heroes in the rift hmm. and they're all just together in their own cells. And like, that's what we're seeing with all of these heroes of the boys. Mm -hmm. Like you're having Frenchie being taken away. You have mother's milk. Who's so close, so close to just like leaving it all behind. Yeah. And that doesn't happen because he wants to stick by his crew. He gets taken away from his family. Huey gets captured. We do see uh, starlight get her powers back which is encouraging going forward. Mm -hmm. But so many of the boys are now incapacitated. They're, they're not a factor going into season five, which is set to be the final season. <clears throat> we did get the reveal this week that it's not coming until 2026. So we have a while. Yeah. We have a long wait. The interesting thing is, as we had alluded to in the beginning of this episode, like, it wasn't our favorite season. I would argue it's probably my least favorite season up until a certain point because there's a couple of episodes in this season that are like pure nine and above to me. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> there's like some weird black holes in, in the season at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I think season five is going to be so epic to such a degree yeah. that it's going to be like the perfect send off for the show. Mm -hmm. um, and I still and that's why I can't wait until you do watch Gen V so we could talk about it and the what what is to come with that because yeah, there's there's, there's definitely a lot of implication lot, yeah. with that show um but what did you think about the final moments michael because i mean we talked a lot about it already obviously but there's so much there to kind of chew on mm -hmm. what was some what was one of your biggest takeaways from the last like five minutes of the episode i agree with the last five minutes i agree was just oh my god chef kiss. chef's kiss mm -hmm. is so beautiful um it i i believe that it was so important to show the now now the new state of their world where it's like before you had soups that i guess were kind of like running the world but like under control like no now soups are like basically running the world type of thing <laughs> and like it shows that the boys are still just a bunch of humans mm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like normal like like citizens and how easy it was for them to just like because think about it like they've been like in hiding for so long but like they waited till now for mm -hmm. all of this for them to just simply come in out of nowhere and be like all right we're taking you guys in we're... Mm -hmm. so like that alone i felt like said a lot and it it played a major role i feel like into this next season mm -hmm. um 
and I'm going to kind of come back to this because there's a lot I have to say about this, this the last five minutes. Um, <laughs> basically, I feel like another thing that they did that's really so strong and needs to be studied with this episode, they kind of brought it to a place where they could follow the comics to a, a degree mm. a little bit more. Um, Because I know that that was like a complaint too. People were saying that like they are just so off from the comics that there's like no going back. Um, And um, I know that in the uh, the comics, there's a certain point where the, all of the boys eventually end up taking V and like they get powers. <laughs> and in that time, at the same time in that comic, I think is when Butcher becomes a villain okay. in the comic. Um, and I'm like watching like the end of like these last five minutes. I'm like, wait a second. Like <laughs> we're now watching a world where like they can't go against a lot of these soups realistically unless they have either more soups on their team, which I would but I would love to see a train and Ashley and all of them come back for that. That would be sick. Um, but we're, we're, they might need to take some V themselves, knowing like the difficulty of the situation. <laughs> and so like it is kind of going back to a place in the comments where like we could see a lot of that with Butcher, all of that. Um so it was really cool to see that like they were able to kind of like reel it back in with all of that. Mm. Um, but again, these last five minutes, there were like the whole Kaneko um, and a Frenchie scene. That was, a, I know, another problem that people had and that they, they were able to bring that in, but still be able to take it away so fast. Um, and Sam was another character in the moment. He was the guy that grabbed Kamiko. That's another mm. Gen V character. Um, major, very important, you can tell. Mm -hmm. um, and you can tell that those characters in that show now especially are going to play a major role yeah. going forward especially with the boys and the other characters that we haven't seen yet yes yes are um, going to play a major role yes definitely um but even um like the huey starlight moment um like when starlight like flew off in those last five minutes um like uh first of all it was really cool really cool just to oh, see yeah. her right <laughs> like the cool way visual it, yeah, it was yeah. very cool as visual <laughs> um but it was also again it felt like to me i don't know why i kind of had like a callback to like oh like this most recent uh season of invincible where it was mm. like um i don't know like for them to all be like separate separated in a way maybe like invincible is a weird example to bring up there yeah. but i don't know it was just like the way that they played it out where it was like they all got separated um and starlight is still kind of like on her own sort of thing like that was the best they could have done for a character because i don't know everything they did is just perfect i have a lot to say and i'm like kind of just going into a tangent now <laughs> so i'm gonna pass no it it's good you. no but <laughs> because there is so much that happens in that moment and i do think and i'm glad you brought up gen v again because <clears throat> i just think that the characters that we are not seeing from that show are gonna have to play a major part in what's going to happen going forward in this world. Yeah. Um, especially if Homelander has his recruits like there, because yeah. there's other characters that are, haven't been implemented other than just screenshots on a news broadcast. Not only that, I just now, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put no, you're good. Go ahead. I just now remember now that Victoria Newman is dead too. I don't want to spoil anything for you, Vinny, but mm -hmm. let's just say there's a character in Gen V that's similar yeah to Victoria. Okay. i'm not going to spoil okay. anything past that because it is a cool sort of story thing mm -hmm. um in it but uh it almost feels like the them bringing this character in the way they did was even more intentional yeah mm -hmm. i totally mm -hmm. agree mm -hmm. um one other thing i did want to touch on which we haven't brought to light yet which was one of my favorite sequences in the whole entire episode is the scene in the bunker hospital that butcher is in with ryan mm -hmm. and his aunt do you remember his aunt's name Great. I don't have it on um on IMDb for some reason. Is it Grace or um, it is yeah, Aunt Grace, Grace, I think, right? Grace Mallory. Yeah, yeah. okay. So yeah. so Aunt Grace, um, who is not a biological aunt, but she's somebody that means a lot and has played a major role in Ryan's life, he kills yeah. out of frustration and out of anger. And uh the fact that they are trying to weaponize him to go against Homelander. Hmm. Um Ryan's had a very interesting season. Mm. One of my favorites, probably my favorite of his. Um, and as the actor who plays Ryan, um, Cameron Crivetti, as he gets older, he's really kind of finding himself with the character, which I think is great. Mm. Um, but he kills his aunt and he, he flees. Where do we think he goes from here? Do we see him being side by side with Homelander? 
Do we see him eventually playing into his demise? Are we going to get the battle that everybody wants to see between Ryan and Homelander? Mm. Do we think he kills Butcher? I mean, there's so many ways that, that he can go, his character. I, I'm curious if you guys had any theories or you guys were thinking about it. And how did you feel about that scene in general? Hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> it was interesting. For me, I don't think Ryan can be redeemed from this movie, from this moment forward. Mm. I think that this is the moment where the writers have been like teetering on like, oh, he's going to be the good boy, take it down. <laughs> oh, he might be the bad boy, right? But <laughs> I think from this point forward, now it's like he's not going to be redeemed, and I think they're going to follow that path. The Homelander path. The, yeah, the Homelander path. But I don't necessarily think that he's going to team back up with Homelander. I think he's going to be kind of like independent in a sense, you know? Mm -hmm. but, but not good. Not on like the side of like the boys. He's going to be a lot more... Uh, more of a killer i think also um now that soldier boy is back i think that might play a really interesting dynamic in the fifth season i think that soldier boy and lion are going to interact again i think so a, too in an interesting way yeah i, agree. I, I would agree with that michael I agree. I, it's definitely going to be <laughs> in like a uh now that he's grind's going to be coming from it older and he's going to be, I feel like now he's a, have had he's had a little bit more experience with powers. We're mm -hmm. definitely going to get like, a, like a fight scene, I yeah. think, between yeah. Ryan Homelander and and Soldier Boy, which will be so cool to see. Um, I um I agree that mm -hmm. like it's it's not even like they can. It's just going to be super hard to kind of redeem him after a kill like that. <laughs> like yeah. if I don't know if they want to, and I also agree, I could see him kind of doing like that. I'm gonna do my own thing type thing mm -hmm. um and maybe coming back at weird moments um yeah. even if it is like the last um episode of the show mm -hmm. i have this theory after watching these last five minutes that i feel like the finale like the series finale of the boys is gonna be on par with avengers endgame i think that mm -hmm. it's gonna be a moment where you're seeing like down to like just like a crazy fight scene where you're seeing like whether the boys have temp the like temp uh, the at that point you're just gonna see like hmm. how they shot endgame essentially where it's like i think you're gonna see moments where like characters are fighting each the other. the last time we got that was what was it the season three finale no season two finale season two where they were like out in oh, that, field. that was a beautiful yeah. movie. maybe <laughs> right. one of that my favorite a... episodes of television <laughs> ever so good so that good. was an awesome awesome episode it was yeah. epic it yes. was really epic um but yeah i do have that theory that it will get to that point um <laughs> and i do think that a lot of these storylines are going to kind of see the conclusion in that moment and i think that's where we'll see ryan and homelander and all of that but i don't know how i do think he'll be stay independent and we'll see how it we'll goes. see what happens yeah. with it. yeah i do so i do have one flaw with the episode okay. which i'll bring to to the um to the forefront and then if there's anything else you guys want to comment on um and then we can maybe get to scores because we did cover pretty much the whole episode mm -hmm. except for this thing that i find that was a big flaw with the episode mm -hmm. um i like the shape-shifting character i don't remember the character's name they were embodying annie for so much of the last couple episodes annie's reaction oh yeah <laughs> really bothered me really yeah. bothered me because how the fuck are you gonna blame huey for not knowing what he was doing there was yeah. no indication that he was gonna be able to figure out like I, it just it, it was so, that was a frustrating choice for me. No, they could have handled that in a much better way, mm -hmm. in which she wasn't being like, "Well, you didn't know that it was me." It's like, how would you expect him to know that that's you? Right? How? Right. That how? bothered me a lot, Vinny. I don't yeah. know if you felt because you you, you were also either. kind of agreeing off screen, but yeah, I no, I agree. <laughs> um, that scene was weird to me uh because technically technically he got assaulted right and it's like tessie starlights over reaction. 20 times yeah <laughs> on top of on top of the tech night shit that you guys yeah. covered last yeah. week oh huey's whole by the way and i won't go too much on a tangent huey this season this is he, he was the most interesting character all season to me because of the approach they had with him. Yeah. Because he had great hero moments and terrific monologues. And I really like Jack Wade. 
I do. Mm-hmm. I really hope after this, because we all know Anthony Starr is going to get a bunch of shit. Carl Urban's already getting big roles, and he mm-hmm. was a bigger actor. Like, I want Jack Quaid to do more. Mm-hmm. I think he's great as Huey. Yeah. And this season, they had such an interesting trajectory with him of, like, this. Yeah. And he was having these major character moments that could be super traumatic that they just completely erased from his character. Yeah. And that's not who he is at his core. The whole reason he goes after the Zooms is because his girlfriend is killed by A-Train. Yeah. yeah. And and now he gets sexually assaulted 30 times in three weeks. Hmm. And it's never touched upon? Yeah. And it's not going to yeah. be touched upon, by the way. I don't have I, – I really don't think they're going to touch upon it ever. So hmm. sorry to cut you off, Vinny. No, that's, no. That's I, how I feel, and I hmm. – it's it's annoying. I, I entirely agree. I entirely agree. I think that it's – uh. It's weird, and I don't, I don't like how it. It kind of reminded me of Amber in Invincible season one. Yes, when Amber was like, "Oh, I knew you were invincible," and everyone was like, "What?" <laughs> and then like she was still mad at him, even though she knew. It reminded me of that, mm-hmm. but like even to a more like disrespectful degree. Yeah, it was because, extreme. Yeah, yeah, because it's like this is such an extreme situation for then annie to be like it just it felt out of character for her too like i understand they're kind of leaning into a more like reckless like she's not thinking too much this season right like that whole scene where she just like gets up on stage fucking uh beats firecracker to near death like she's having this more reckless like not thinking so i don't know if like that was their intention with that um but it just felt out of place it felt weird it was just so it just felt disrespectful not only to the audience and the fans but like to both of their characters huey and starlight's character yeah Yeah. i agree michael did you have anything on that you know i definitely agree it was so (laughs) such such a weird moment Mm -hmm. um also i was gonna say that uh like like despite obviously like the time it took that they were with like huey still did figure out that it wasn't her like which wasn't like a like a easy sort of thing like that so i don't know i feel like like despite it taking a little bit like he still did save starlight so like he that kind of made the the response a little unwarranted too um but yeah so many reasons assault heavily that's like probably the first one i didn't even think about the fact that he was assault it's crazy i guess because the boys is so they like will just like sh- like, well, it's like grotesque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They sugarcoat so much that it's like you don't even realize when they're doing something that's like a serious sort of thing yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And so like I didn't even really realize how much Huey had been assaulted throughout this, coming off of the death of his father. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Like really strange thing for them to do. Um, I just kind of I just that was really weird after hearing that. I just had to really kind of like nitpick on that. That's really strange, but um. Yeah, no, I definitely didn't like how they wrote Starlight's character. It was just like a really weird sort of... Yeah, Annie was interesting this season. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it was an interesting approach. But yeah. there was a lot that happened, obviously, in this episode. But we should give a score, not for the episode, but for the season as a whole, which I know is kind of hard to do. It's an uneven season in my eyes. Um, There are some really great highs. <clears throat> Homelander's episode returning back to his... To his birth, so to speak, is yeah. a fantastic episode. This finale is one of the better episodes that we've seen from the boys in quite a while. There's a lot to chew on with it. I have a score in my mind. I can give it if you guys want me to give it, unless there's anything else you guys want to cover, but I think we did it all. Yeah. No, we're good? Okay. So, though I did love the finale and that Homelander episode, I'm going to give this season a 7.5 out of 10. It's probably in between a 7.5 and, and an 8 for me. Um, I made a, uh, I used to give scores and the in-betweens all the time last year of trying to shy away from that and just stick with the halves or the holes. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a, a strong 7.5, um, leaning in between really a 7.5 and an eight. Michael, where, where are you leaning? I lean up to pretty said I was thinking I was teetering on the 6.5 okay. um, level, but I think I'm going to give it a seven. Um, just thinking back to um i honestly forgot about episodes like that with homelander and like the small moments of crazy we got from him Mm. but like even like just like the vulnerable (coughs) moments from huey and like the bed scene Mm. those made up for it so i would give it a seven okay yeah um and sticking with that i'm also giving it a seven i think that 
like you mentioned, the highs are incredible. I'm just looking at the IMDb. Like episode four, episode five was really good. <laughs> episode seven and episode eight were really, really good. Uh, the other episodes did not care about, uh, but the highs make up for it. Mm-hmm. Um, just a, a light, light, light seven. Yeah. Wouldn't go any higher than that. I will say, I think I can take away from this conversation between the three of us that we are stoked for season five hmm. because there's a lot oh, yeah. to come, especially if it is true that this is going to be the last season of the boys proper. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that need to be kind of wrapped up, but I thought like you had said, Michael, they did a really great job of wrapping up this season and putting the fans in a place where they can be really excited and confident going into season five. Hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot. We talked about a lot this whole season. We hope you guys enjoyed the ride with us. This is our first time we were able to cover the boys on the channel. What did you guys think about season four of the boys? If you guys had to give it a score, please write it in the comments. And we'd love to have a conversation with you guys. Talk about the high highs, the low lows, things you liked, new characters, characters that you're excited to see come back like Soldier Boy. Um, <coughs> theories you guys may have going forward. Let us know in the comments and be sure to give this video a like if you can and subscribe to us. We have the Culture Wave media network we cover all things film and television if you're also a fan of superhero stuff michael and i will be covering deadpool and wolverine next week plus all the comic-con news we're going to get into uh after this weekend and a lot of stuff going forward um vinny's also going to be covering the penguin with us uh Mm. in september october when is that oh i I forget i think it's october (laughs) but i don't know sorry i was just asking off the side but um we got a lot of superhero coverage for you guys so i hope you guys will tune in for that you can also follow us on social media if you don't already. We are at Cinema Wave Media and at underscore Culture Wave Media on Instagram, as well as at Cinema Wave Media, Cinema Wave Media on TikTok and Threads, and just Culture Wave on Facebook. I am signing off. I am Darian Scalamoni. I'm Mikey Peniston. And I am Vanille Bando. Peace out, everybody. This is the culture.